Welcome back and today we are going to be playing out the MiG-23 ML and just like all the other rank 7 premiums you should only pick these things up when they are on sale. This thing is not overpriced because it's bad however quite on the contrary but there is a little bit of nuance to it because this thing isn't as straightforward as you might think it is. It might go on sale tomorrow and that's why I want to warn you beforehand that they are looking to change all the MiG-23 flight models. So what you are seeing on the screen right now is not what you might have in a week or two or maybe a month from now. So I want to warn you that it will be worse in the future. They are going to be nerfing the energy retention and thus decreasing the maneuverability, decreasing the rate and overall your flight model is going to take a bit of a hit. So my advice, wait until the next sales, see what this plane is going to be like and like have a year from now. Maybe it will go down in BR, maybe something will happen to it. But I recommend you to not pick it up right now. Now if you are looking to grind everything out in like a week or two, well be my guest. But I just really wanted to make this video. So you either don't waste your money or you at least have a good source to decide if you actually want to waste your money on it. The MiG-23 ML is identical to the German MiG-23 MLA, but it is a little bit different to the Russian MLD. So if you already have the MLD and you are able to talisman it, I would say do that instead. It suits ARB a hell of a lot better. The MiG-23 ML variants just kind of rely on their flight performance and the MLD has front facing slats on the wings which means that it turns a bit tighter. Now yes, this is at the expense of energy retention. However, well, the energy retention on the MLD is still good enough and this thing just doesn't turn well enough to punish mistakes. It takes quite a while to kill people because the way you kill them is with energy retention as well as acceleration. If you've ever flown the TAL 152H without flaps, you know exactly what I mean. Sure, eventually you will run them out of energy, the balls will be drained and you get a relatively easy kill. However, by the time that happens, you have probably perished to one of the 20 other enemies that are now licking your bum. The issue is that at top tier the matches are pretty one-sided, so when you have to carry at the end of a game, you want a plane that can kill people quickly. The airframe on this just doesn't allow you to do so. And again, the airframe is pretty damn good, it just could be better. What is good about this is that you have variable wing sweep, so you can be either decently maneuverable or you can just be hella fast. You get a red line at about 1400 kilometers an hour, you can push another 60 kph IS on that and you will not rip your wings off. You will rip your wings off unfortunately in a straight line but it's at the same time a little bit of a good thing as well because normally when you are engine limited on your top speed the last like 100 to 150 kilometers an hour take forever to reach but this thing that is not the case at all it will just keep on pushing until the plane literally disintegrates so you do want to be a little bit careful with that but in general this plane is made to just always have energy so at the start of the game and this is a fantastic thing because even if you get like four people on you you can just turn a little bit they will burn their speed away you can just disengage and let your teammates eat everyone up do be careful if you have your wings swept all the way back your attention is noticeably worse if you are on 100 wing sweep it's gonna piss away your energy very quickly so be a little bit careful with that but if you are around mac and the wings start coming out a little bit you basically stabilize very quickly now what about the killing power now we have a good airframe and we have a gun that hits decently hard you see me clap three people in like 12 seconds in the background this is not something that happens very often it is uh, definitely a highlight and not something that i am reliably able to do the gun is a little bit awkward to aim and it's not only because it has the ballistics of a water pistol but it's also because the airframe the rudder just the whole geometric layout of this plane it doesn't feel super stable and it makes it a little bit wobbly now if you get people in a 1v1 you can basically always drain them of energy get them slow and then the ballistics and just the aimability of the gun doesn't really matter all that much now we merge with a mig-29 i know i just talked about energy retention and here i am going basically air braking into the turn because it's very important to kill people quickly if you don't want to get third partied and if you get on the six of someone with this plane if you get the position your energy will basically always make it so that you end up winning the fight unfortunately 1v1s aren't very likely let's take a look at something that will be most of your kills as the f20 almost vetoes into my plane the r24rs now the r24rs are very damn good missiles the issue is that the radar set it's paired with 
isn't really that fantastic so you do end up being bottlenecked by the radar set itself once the missile is in the air once you have someone locked up it's pretty good the missiles are pretty damn consistent just be careful that you don't get notched so in general i try to only use these things in the head-ons and not on people like the one i'm shooting at right now that's flying basically perpendicular to my plane slightly ironic but here's some examples of me going head-on with people now the thing I like to do is have a little bit of altitude for two reasons. They shoot a missile at me and I end up defeating their missile. And they are pointing at me because a lot of people use ACM mode and they have to put their nose up a little bit. And it makes them not hug the deck. This makes your missile a little bit more consistent. Because you have to keep in mind that the R24R doesn't give every plane an RWR signal. So a lot of people aren't aware it's an actual R24R. And they just end up headbutting it directly on the forehead. So that is a very consistent way to get kills. Do be careful with getting off the deck. It might end up biting you in the ass. I'm not going to pretend like it never happened to me. But it's a good way to get a consistent one or two kills essentially every game. And talk about the RWR. The RWR in return on this plane is also just positively terrible. It doesn't pick up half the radar sets that can lock you up. So you really have to just look around and make sure that whatever is shooting at you isn't a radar missile. Because the, the same thing that I just mentioned can also just happen to you. And this is another massive distinction between this thing and the MLD because the MLD has a better RWR system that makes it a lot well more aware of everything around you. So if you are playing in simulator for example you're definitely not going to have a great time in this thing. Or at least that's my take on it. And then we have the last missile, the R60M. The R60M have limited range, limited flare rejection, limited pull of the rail. They are maybe 30G missiles, but they need a little bit of speed to get going. And overall, they are just not my favorite thing to use. They used to be okay, but with the amount of flares on a lot of planes nowadays... As well as just people being a lot more aware of IR missiles. You basically have to ambush people with this missile. And otherwise it's going to do absolutely nothing. Now let's take a bit of a look at the ML in his natural habitat. We slammed some people at the start. And then we did basically nothing for the rest of the game. And we are now being engaged by everyone at the same time. And we have our 60 ms we try to shoot them at the same time. Sometimes people end up not flaring or they don't dodge the gun because they are looking at the missile. In this case the F-15 sponged a few of my 23s and he is essentially out of the game. And that's a good thing because F-15s and F-16s absolutely rock your shit in this plane. So you want to mostly be aware of those things. Now we have three people on a 6 and it's an FGR, a Mirage 2000 and an F-1C. Now... The Magic 2s are pretty damn gnarly nowadays. And because I don't have the most amount of countermeasures, I need to be pretty careful. Now luckily, neither of them have a lot of these missiles left. So I am able to actually engage them all at once. Because I can somewhat pre-flare. This was of course a little bit of a Hail Mary. I can't even shoot the R60 because it won't curve in. I fold out the wings all the way and I'm going to try to keep my position. And I'm going to try to make it so that I run them all out of energy. The issue is that you can see right here, they are not synchronized. The Mirage is looping up. The Mirage F1C is looping up but in a different position. And the FGR is going into a raid fight. I am using my flaps here to get kind of out of the nose of the F1C. I'm thinking about stalling them all out. But that all the Mirage is already pulling in. If I keep this turn up... I simply die. And this is the main issue with this play. Now yes I am showcasing a 1v3. And 1v3s shouldn't be winnable in most planes. You are completely correct. However I'm just trying to illustrate here. That if you turn a little bit tighter. And you are able to actually keep your energy a little bit lower. To actually get that shot quickly. I probably would have been able to kill the FGR with the MLD in that first turn. And then I only have to worry about the F1C as well as the Mirage 2000. Now we end up running away. They are RTB. I land. And then I get strafed on the runway. So I'm not going to bore you with that. I just ended up eating shit. Let's take a look at another example. Early game. R24 kill. Easy clap. Go on to the next target. And see if we can find anyone. Now we are kind of spearheading the team here. Because I'm hoping that they aren't looking over here yet. That they aren't aware of my presence. Or that they maybe get caught up with my team. So I can turn around and ambush two or three of them. I like these maps with some mountains. 
with some terrain where I can play hide and seek because these situations make the R60Ms just a little bit more bearable. When people are not looking at you, the R60 is more than sufficiently maneuverable, but you just kind of need to shove these missiles directly up their ass before you start firing them because the, well, the range of them is just absolutely laughable. We turn around, we try to get unspotted, we peek up over the hill and we are going to go for the MiG-29. Now I'm thinking about using the R-24R, but he's not really pulling into us, so I turn my radar off and we are going to get on a 6. A little bit of a bad launch, but I just want to illustrate how mid this missile is. He goes vertical, we latch onto a 6, we pitch up, we shoot a missile and we instantly dive back down in the terrain. Why? Because you don't want to stay in these fights. You want to keep your speed somewhat high. You want to stay above 0.9 Mach with essentially every plane. Because you just want to be somewhat survivable. Get off the deck. Shoot a missile. And he's a little bit too high. He's not able to get down there. We are. We slap him out of the air. And we continue on straight. Second missile comes in. We are now out of R24R. So we might use the ACM mode on occasion to maybe radar slave a missile. But in general... Try to keep the radar off so they don't end up picking up an RWR signal. Now yes, most of the radars won't pick it up anyway. But it's a rather safe than sorry situation. We get engaged by an F-14 and an ML. Now this is not going to be the best situation or the best engagement. But I just want to show you uh, that this is essentially all of my games. Now sure, I get some clips. I get some kills at the start. One or two kills. Maybe three, maybe four. And then it ends up like this. The MiG-23 ML has been one of my worst win rates overall at top tier. And that's mainly because you just don't make a massive impact. The R-24s will be your main source of killing. The R-60s and just the lack of a very quick killing flight model. Make it so that you can't really go 1v3 at the end either. If you have the MLD, Talisman that instead. You are going to be much better off. Is it a bad play however? Definitely not and it's a very consistent grinder as well because you do get those two very free kills at the start. It's just the complete opposite of something like the FRS that I reviewed last week. Where you only have missiles and your flight performance just sucks complete dick. Do I recommend it? I'm really not sure. Make up your own mind. I think I've made a pretty clear exposition. Thank you all for watching and you'll see me in the next one.